that that some of the media have tried to force this storyline of this is Obama's Katrina and that that's just not fair. What's your reaction? Well, uh, it, we, the odious, uh, comparisons are odious, Shakespeare said, and I wouldn't compare this to Katrina, but it is worth examining the timeline. The graphics, the high-tech graphics department has helped me prepare a, a mini timeline for you here, Jane. The disaster happens on the 20th. <laughs> Uh, on the 22nd, the rig sinks, and the Coast Guard announces that there's only residual oil that's popping up to the surface. Uh, White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs says, oh, the president has not been in touch with anybody in the region. On the 23rd, uh, the Coast Guard even announces that the blowout device uh, was activated, which turns out not to be the case. The 24th, they announce they find that there is a leak, and it's 1,000 barrels a day, with pretty say, pretty big leak. Uh, it takes until the 27th for the federal government to declare this an incident of national significance. This is important because such a finding is necessary to deploy massive amounts of federal resources. They can bring in the, Ar they can bring in the Air Force and the, and the Navy, for example. And the next day, they find out that it's 5,000 gallons, five times as big as they thought. And immediately the day after, both federal and state officials accused British Petroleum of not moving fast enough, even though they themselves didn't move for seven days to find out the true, the true problem. Carl, I just On want to read... The press. Yeah. Before we get yeah. uh, too far in this timeline, I just want to read because the press secretary, Robert Gibbs, has been asked so many questions about this, and this was his response. Uh, the morning after, the secretary, the interior secretary, deployed his deputy to the region to coordinate it all. On the 22nd, when it sank, the national response team was activated, and later that day, the pres president convened a meeting in the Oval Office with all those involved. I mean, at some point in time, at the beginning there, they were relying also on the oil company, on BP. This was a, a disaster yep. that people didn't have a lot of information about. It's all happened happening a mile well, underwater. They they shouldn't rely solely on BP. In fact, they weren't. They were also relying on the Coast Guard for what's called situational awareness. And, and, and look, the administration was trying to distance itself from this at the beginning and properly leave it over at first the Coast Guard and then the Interior Department. But for example, you mentioned the deputy, the, the, the number two guy at, the, at, at Interior, the Chief of Staff, Tom Strickland, who's also the Assistant Secretary for Parks, uh, Fish, Game and Parks. He dis disappears for a three-day rafting vacation, a working vacation in the Grand Canyon on the 27th to the 29th when they're finding out that it's 5,000. He, he departs the day be be before they find out it's 5,000 gallons and doesn't come back until after they've declared it an yeah. incident of Carl, national significance. I know a lot of people are making spoken a out. big issue about that, but uh, first of all, he's not the interior secretary. He's not the deputy interior secretary. Those are the bosses of the department. He's a chief of staff. You know, I know well what the job of a chief of staff is, but the administration says he was there on, as you say, doing some work, took a day to go whitewater right. rafting. They choppered him out of there. It's not like the country, the Interior Department can't run without the Chief of Staff. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He's not just the chief of staff. He's also the assistant secretary who's in right. charge of the response. So it's nine days, nine days after the incident, and they have to chopper him. He's gone. He departs seven days after the incident begins and has to be choppered back out of the Grand Canyon nine days. Now, look, I, you're, 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 the secretary of interior needs his right-hand guy there during this, during this. A lot of people were not paying attention to business. Now, look, I understand. I'm not playing this at the feet of the White House because at the end of the day, you have to rely upon the situational awareness available to you by the lead agency, which at the beginning was the, was the Coast Guard, right. and then it was later shifted to the Interior Department. I'm just saying this was a little bit of a muddled response, and the administration is now trying to sort of rewrite history and say, we were engaged right from the beginning. No, they weren't, and nor should we expect them necessarily. We don't expect the president to pick up the phone after every natural disaster one or two days later and begin to call people and sort of be in touch of it. It, it, was not, it wasn't necessary for the president to call on the 22nd, but the administration should now rewrite history by, you know, I thought it was interesting, they start blaming I mean, BP on the 28th saying they didn't move fast enough when they themselves did not move the Air Force and the Navy into action until the 29th, nine days after the event. Well, they do. You know, I just want to point out again, they do say that the, they had the Deputy Interior Secretary down there, that he was the one that was actually in charge, tasked with organizing this. And also, Carl, just to, we, we're out of time, but well, well, you've got you, two you know, very yeah, competent yeah, Jane, governors. You've got Bobby Jindal and, and the yeah, governor of Mississippi, absolutely. Haley Barber, who also, if there were alarm bells to be set off, they would have set them off.